Do you like Elden Ring? Do you like JoJo's wacko journey? Do you like the high octane battles, the spicy men posing, or maybe you like the incest you dirty dog you? Because I'll tell you what, I love John Jones. I also hate Elden Ring, but the power of my love for JoJo cancels out my hatred and multiplies it into a moderate appreciation because of the mighty power of Pimdaz. Everywhere I go, I hit a JoJo pose. When I'm at the grocery store, I'm hitting a lean back, finger point, leg breaking animation. When I'm fighting my inner demons, I'm using my stand. My inspiration for my character is going to be the one and only Master Cucker, Dio Von Dio. It's not just any Dio though, minor spoilers, but not really because it's a single picture of a random moment, but it's specifically this moment where he got his shit rocked and socked. This is only step one of many to the power of Donald Brando, and boy, are we in for quite a nutsack busting journey with this run, let me tell you. There's quite a bit of things we need to get before we can even start the run. We have to do some pretty game breaking things to get the stuff that we need this early, but don't worry, because it's going to be MC Hammer Pants epic, just trust me. The first thing we need is the weapon skill, Phantom Slash. However, the skill is located in between Lindell and the mountaintop of the giants, which means we have to beat Morgoth before we can even get it. However, it's my skill and I want it now, so I'm going to have to do some fancy smancy glitches in order to get it early. Next up, we need a compatible weapon to use the skill. And finally, we need some drippy drip to look more like everyone's favorite two-timer. Now, even though my character looks like Dio, this side character is whooping my ass over and over again. We need to murder this guy because he has one piece of the puzzle that will allow us to obtain our stand. I need to get his weapon, the big old blue snake pole. Now, you're probably wondering why I need it, and unfortunately, I can't tell you that just yet, plus ratio, so you'll just have to wait and see. Now, this is a vital part for my plan, you just can't see the vision right now, but it'll all come to you in time. The second thing we need to get for our plan is the black knife from the, you guessed it, the edgy self-insert gangster, also known as Black Knife. Honestly, I came and fought this guy way too early, and this is also like the first time I've actually fought him ever since I played the game. So unfortunately, he made me look like an absolute fool in front of everyone I know. You know, for looking like Dio, so far I haven't really done many Dio-like things in this playthrough. I haven't, spoiler alert, cucked my brother, cooked a dog, killed my dad, you know, the typical cool cat stuff. All I've done is get my ass whooped by two side quest characters, but it's okay because everyone loves a good come on backstory. I think I fucked around with this guy for like two hours, running back and forth, despawning him, dying, and going back up the seven hour long elevator to refight him, all for nothing because I never even got close to beating him once. I'm also too lazy to level a little to actually stand a chance, so eventually after losing over and over again and causing me to completely mauled at his power levels, I decided the best course of action was to get him stuck in a corner and stunlock him until he just uninstalled the game. It would have worked out perfectly as well, but he decided that he needed to stretch out his legs and ends up doing an absolute absolutely boofu bonkers kickflip which can only be explained as the power of an enemy stand. After many tries, many flips, and many therapy sessions, I finally got him stuck long enough that I was able to beat him and take his name and turn it into a weapon, which is the last thing I needed for the secret plan. Alright, now here comes the fun part. We use both the big blue stick and the tiny pokey knife and the power of the bible to walk on air. Now I could fully explain how I'm flying and doing this glitch, but instead I'll give you an outline. Step 1, get the blue stick and knife. Step 2, have the knife in main hand and the ujimachi kwachi kadahara in the off hand. Step 3, attack with the uki kaka kata duty sword and then immediately press the Asha war button to buffer it. Step 4, swap the Uzumaki clan sword to the blue stick fast enough. Step 5, witness Dio perfected. Unfortunately, I didn't record the entire skip, but the gist of it is that you get on the railing and walk all the way around the wall to get past the Morgoth barrier without actually beating Morgoth. Pretty snazzy if you ask me. Now that we got past the gatekeeping Morgoth sill, we have to beat the Knight's Calvary, which this early on would make me die of old age, so instead I get them stuck on a ledge and AFK until enough snow melts that the horse just slips and falls off the mountain because otherwise the run would have never been completed because I tried to fight them normally and I was doing no damage the entire time and I could not care to spend 4 hours hitting them until they died. So instead like the Jojo anime would do, I used a loophole and succeeded instead which is completely in character for most of the characters in the anime. We have the skill, however we need a weapon that can use it. Only twin blades, spears, halberds, and reapers can use the skill, so we have to get a little out of the box and get creative. After looking through all the available weapons and studying every single frame of the anime, I decided on the only weapon that would fit into the world of JJBA, the Grave Scythe. Oh, but where did the conclusion come from, you may ask? Where and when is the scythe used in the anime? Right here, baby. 
This cocksucker right here has a scythe, and that's good enough of a connection for me to use it. Once again, the loophole strikes again. In order to get the weapon, we have to farm these skeletons until it drops, and you can see how long it took by looking at the transition from day to night killing them. So it probably took like 2 minutes by my calculations. There's one final thing that we need to get in order to fully start the run. I don't feel in the spirit of Dio right now, I want to feel him inside me, and the only way to do that is to wear a shirt that kind of looks like something he wears. There's a bunch of different clothes he wears in the anime, but I saw this shirt first, so I hyper-focused tunnel visioned onto it instead of doing more research. Basically, it's the Radon Guard shirt, which means I have to keep building up my stamina, climbing this ladder, and knocking them off for a WWE cage match slam until they just give it to me. And let me tell you, they were stingy little bitches. And now that I have it, look at it. It's a perfect replica. An exact match. A four times twice removed cousin that nobody wants to claim at baggage claim. You know the one. The one that jumps on the conveyor belt and shoves a tag in their mouth to be scanned, and everyone kinda just looks around nervously until he stops. It was me. Alright, finally, we've got some action going. We get to see Margit's stupid ass face finally. So when I use the Phantom Slash, my stand comes out and mimics my attack. The best part is, however, that even if I don't get the attack out because I get fart slammed, my stand knows what I was going to do and does it for me. This means that even if I don't do any damage, my stand still does because none of these losers have a stand, so they can't see it or interact with it. You know, JoJo lore and stuff. Honestly, if we counted the amount of hits and damage that I do versus my stand, I'm pretty sure that my stand would be higher on both categories, which again is completely lore accurate, so it works out. Now fighting Margit is basically just spamming the button so my stand gets out and hits him even if it means I get hit because the Grave Scythe does bleed damage so it's a win-win. I do damage to Margit and I get hit by a big man and after watching Jonathan's mishaps of craziness I do not mind one bit. I didn't even bring any talismans into the fight because I just wanted to hurry out and try the scythe real quick and the first time I tried it against him I did pretty good so I said fuck it we ball we go again and it worked out just fine the second time around. So much so that I panicked trying to look cool after beating him, and ended up looking like a complete cringe lord master, sitting in my menus looking for a cool emote, and waving instead. Well Margit's done, so we need to go get some upgrades for our weapon. I'm only getting the upgrades in this cave because while I am Dio, I don't want to be too strong, otherwise I would have cosplayed a completely different character like this guy. I forget just how strong you can actually get from only this cave, I think it's like plus 3 or something, so nothing too big, but Dio's a vampire, so I needed to get my cave fix in before I went insane. I also enjoy walking around aimlessly spamming the pickup button, until I much like those silly goofy ads on certain websites say, pick up all hot milfs within a 5 mile radius. Eventually I make it to the bottom of the cave and fight the troll, which was just such a silly fight that I had to show off my new move that I obtained for Dio. This move also comes directly off the show and once again, spoilers, it's when he gets ass blasted and blows up because he got smoked by plot armor like a loser and let me tell you, this troll absolutely despised what happened to him here. Sticking true to the character of Dio, we have to hit some devious licks on every NPC we encounter and talk to because why not? And seeing as how this skinny malnourished little goblin is telling me to go around the gate, I'm going to do the only thing that makes sense. I'll force him to open the main gate and then immediately pimp slap him until he perishes and plays the victim card by saying, why is it always me? Trick does the same exact thing and cries every time I hit him. And since I'm Lord Dio, it only makes sense that I show off my epic moves on him. This means I style on him by doing all sorts of stanky legs and gritties until he just can't take it anymore. Of course, we don't stop when he loses an arm either because we have no honor and only see the advantages. And right now, him missing an arm is the biggest advantage we could possibly get. So hey, the game's the game, GG, easy, Godric's a cripple. I eventually decide to get my first talisman since the start of the run, and what better talisman than the ritual sword? I have no idea why I decided to get this one, because I basically never get to use it since I get hit more than domestic violence cases. If you don't know the talisman gives you 10% more damage when you're at full health, which seems fitting for Dio, but realistically is impractical for me due to the severe mental lapses. I just keep it to act like it's doing something, you know, the classic placebo effect, and because maybe Dio is stronger at full health, I don't know. I don't read the lore. Now this guy's story quest is actually pretty sad if you actually complete it. It really brings a tear to my eye, much like Roblox car crashes. Just really tragic stuff. However, this isn't America's Got Talent, so sob stories won't work here, so we're just gonna murder him because we saw him, and honestly, that's enough for me. Finally the moment I've been waiting for, I can finally truly become Dio, except I'm missing one important thing. I don't have an oven to throw this dog into. Damn it, I was so close to embracing Dio and filling him inside me, but I was so far off in the end. Anyway, there's not much of the fight with Red Wolf, 
In fact, there never really is. I have no idea why I include it to begin with. I promise I love dogs or wolves and furries, I guess. But sometimes you just need to, you know, get in character and cook some stuff in the oven. So Dio is like basically immortal, right? So why don't we go get him some more defense to make him feel like he truly is a JoJo character. So we make sure to go through this long ass Control c Control v Catacombs TM pending in order to get the plus one version of this talisman because I do not mess around with the normal versions. Having to balance myself on this saw was probably the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire video game career because my death perception is completely cooked to the point of being indistinguishable to my IQ levels. Eventually we pick up the talisman and leave out of the Control c Control v Catacombs TM pending and move on with our life. Since we also beat Red Wolf, I decided that the Frost Enchantment would be a good idea because in the anime, Dio tries to rap and he's so bad that he exhales ice instead of fire so it makes sense to me. If you don't believe me, it's actually in scene 114, frame 73 on part 3. Trust me, you can look it up and see for yourself. Sometimes you just have to show how much of an alpha you are and who's more alpha than the one and only Dio. Not even Renala's bare pasty white feet can seduce Dio because it's about to get domestic up in this house. Neither can her little minions, mostly because I have no idea how old they actually are, so I am definitely staying away from those ones. The fight with Renala is easy peasy, lemony squeezy, with a little bit of foot cheese sprinkled on top, and I'm making sure to slurp all of that up, and I refuse to share with anyone who asks. Unless, of course, you provide me with a little something that piques my interest, wink wink, nudge nudge, tug tug. Bleed mixed with frost as well as our kamikaze move is enough to deal with Renala about 9 times over. But we only do it 8 times because we need to preserve this foxy feline's final life because sometimes I just need to stare at some pasty feet. Now believe it or not, Radon and his horse are actually lore accurate to the anime. If you don't believe me, then look at this undeniable proof. His name has horse in it, therefore it's completely in character to be whooping on this fool. During the fight, I only use the Ash of War's first attack rather than the second, otherwise I get rocket propelled right into a snatch and unspeakable things that I cannot even imagine happen from there. The fight in general is not that bad, probably accounting for the fact that ever since the game's release, this man's got nerfed into the ground, nerfed into hell itself, and nerfed all the way to the black void where he belongs. It's really that simple to just sit on his lap and let the stand do most of the work on him without too much worry. The bleed frost scythe combo is a little over the top, but again, there's a character with a scythe in the anime, so just relax. Now this isn't something I'm super proud of, but the game's the game. I already said that if they get near me, they have to perish, and unfortunately Alexander didn't listen to the wise words of old time. Trust no one, not even yourself, so I have no idea why he would ever trust me, and even the slightest because as a vampire, I need his licorice strands, and thank god they're red because black licorice is absolutely vile. And because the licorice will give me more damage for my skill, so it's worth it in the end. It's pretty impressive to me that there's a rogue stand here with no stand user in sight. This is unprecedented in the world of Jumbalai's Wacko Expedition. And with the power of Dio, I can just say, eh, forget about it, and give him the old yellow donger stopper special. Which is technically banned in 13 states, 2 continents, and 4 colonies, but we're pretty rebellious rapscallions, so we have nothing to worry about. If I'm quick as a mouse, I'm able to get both hits in and dodge a stomp attack, but that doesn't happen very often if I'm being honest. The fight's alright, not really too difficult, not too hard. I just had to make sure to try and attack him from a little farther away than usual to ensure that I could get an attack out before he body slams me. But I don't know, Godfrey is kind of just like a piece of gum stuck under the table because most people don't pay him too much attention, but I make sure to chew him up. This man whooped my Gluteus Maximus multiple times. He just so gosh darn fast that I can barely catch him with my slowest snail stand. I ready my attack and he pulls out a double kickflip backflip over the moon and lands back down on top of me, causing me to get complete spinal paralysis that I can do nothing about. I played this fight out like a complete goober, honestly, but since halfway through he gets out of breath, gets on one knee, and then proposes to me because of my killer charm and looks, it wasn't too bad. Unfortunately, I don't swing that way, Buster, so I had to make sure to deny his proposal in front of everyone I know, record it, and post it online so people can make fun of him for being such a loser. As long as I attacked after one of his attacks, I was pretty well off. After beating some bosses, I didn't feel like Dio was strong enough. You know, he could take a beating for sure without getting too much trouble, but if the beating was in a red color or a blue color, it wouldn't turn out so good. So I went and got the Pearl Jam Talisman to help with the multicolored damage that I'll encounter throughout the journey. This means that I now have extra damage from physical abuse and elemental abuse, however nothing can protect me from the psychological abuse I go through every day. This guy's legs are so hairy and I don't like that. As the ultimate man figure Dio, anyone with hairy body parts must be eliminated. Therefore, Fire Giant has to bite the dust. 
Get it? <laughs> it's a JoJo reference. But that's not important right now. What's important is the fact that Fire Giant is the biggest pushover I've ever seen. Just standing near him and giving him a little bit of a trim with my scythe is enough for him to Tom and Jerry scream his lungs out. This man is a crybaby wimp sissy pants for sure, no cap on a stack for real for real. I don't even really have to try and time my attacks when fighting him because he skips leg day so his movement speed is in the negatives. He for sure gets blood clots all the time and since Dio's a vampire, I'm sucking. But yeah, Fire Giant has never taken too kindly to Bleed and Frost because the bigger the health bar, the more damage is done, blah blah blah, game mechanics, blah blah, quadratic formula, whatever, yada yada. I usually just do the snowfield skip, but I decided that I would be an adult and fight Niall like normal, and that was the worst mistake of my life because he's an absolute cheater. He's a cheater because I don't remember any of his attacks, so it's clearly his fault and not mine. Having to learn all of his attacks while also only using one attack was probably not the best idea, but I wanted to stop being a speedrunning cuck and just play the game normally. Joke's on me because that was the worst mistake of my entire life. His judo kick of death fucked me over so many times, I can't even count that high. Whatever number comes after 4 is how many times it happened, but I don't know what that is. Eventually I beat him after realizing that I can't just press a button and win the game, so I had to actually find openings between his attacks and go from there. Basically every time he showed off his Air Jordans and jumped up in the air, I tickled his udders and that was the only time he would let me. Also, I thought Margit was the master of delaying attacks, but this guy has internet explorer levels of delay. I normally would have gone through and fought Loretta, since I just got the medal from Nile, but I couldn't see anything in the blizzard and I ended up here instead. What the fuck going on in Miami, bro? Boy, got in no! Shit, that shit just disappeared! The fight wasn't actually too bad, believe it or not, since I could just start my attack outside their range, stop time, hit them, and then get out before they could react. Except I didn't do any of that, and instead I got ganged up on by both of them at once multiple times instead. Which I typically would prefer, but for the sake of the run, I must not let this happen. I just wiggled different items from far away, which caused them to run towards me one by one, since they like the different things. For the skinny one, I wiggled a picture of his dad that left at a young age, and for the bigger one, I used insulin for his diabetes and they both came to me relatively quickly. It worked perfectly and I was able to get them both where I wanted them whenever I needed. Also, I may or may not have been recording when I actually beat them, but I mean, here I am after the fight and I give you my Boy Scout salute that I beat them exactly the same way I've beaten every other boss, I swear. I was 100% in the Boy Scout, so you can take my word. The instructor gave me extra special private lessons after hours all the time, so it's basically confirmed, and his word is my ass or my bond, I, I don't know. I'm doing all sorts of jumps, jukes, and hula hoops in order to get behind Loretta's horse and in hell. Thankfully, I got the Pearl Jam Talisman in order to soften the blows from Loretta's magic. 450 degrees Fahrenheit, no time to rest, and unseasoned. Exactly how I like it. With the amount of times that Loretta splooged on me, I really should have been put out of commission, but again, the Pearl Jam Talisman completely saved me. I have nothing else to say. Since we beat Loretta, we can upgrade our physical abuse talisman to not only protect myself from belts and bottles, but when now protected from fists as well. A little too late in life, but it's the thought that counts. Now, I know what you're thinking. Man, that spaghetti last night was dank as hell, boy, yes sir. But you're also thinking it's pretty early for Melania, usually she's fought as one of the last bosses, well not for Dio. Dio's here to clap some cheeks and he's making sure it's happening. With the Phantom Slash skill, we both have the capability to lunge at each other to make some super epic anime fight moments. But every time I tried to get a cool moment, it didn't work out and she Street Fighter combo stunlocked me and killed me. So I started to get mad and I gave up on the dreams of a cool cinematic moment and just decided to put the full Austin Powers on her. This fight was actually pretty easy, simply because of the power of the stand was enough to knock her off balance every time, which allowed me to instant teleport on top of her constantly. The hardest part of the fight was looking for an opening to use my explosion attack, because if I missed it, it was the end of the railroad for me. I didn't have to use the self-destruct button, but for the sake of consistency and not being called a little sissy baby girl for not doing it, I had to go for it. She used her Scarlet Onion attack quite a bit, which made me super duper happy tree friends since I could easily get an attack on her. Other than that though, Melania was a complete pushover for Dio, which just proves that Dio was way too based to be defeated by a woman. The Dragon Lord's fight took longer than I wanted. I had hoped that I would be in and out in like 4 minutes, but unfortunately he held me hostage in his domain for 4 minutes and 1 second. Unlucky for me, I'm a loser, Dragon Lord poggers, you know how it goes. In between his Unreal Engine 5 demonstration attack, I was able to get an attack off and honestly, the whole fight relied on status effects, 
because otherwise I would have been in Dragon Lord jail for way too long. Other than his health bar being massive, it's not too bad to keep slashing his thunder thighs, especially because most of his attacks are continuous. So if you dodge the initial damage, then you basically have free damage for like 10 seconds every single time. That's honestly all I have to say about Dragon Lord, and that's all he deserves for thinking he can manipulate time around Dio of all people. Yet another dog for Dio to take advantage of in more ways than one. Every time I attack him, I zip past his hitbox and insert myself right into him, allowing me to bypass his attack. Even if he does manage to hit me while I'm speed racing past him, it doesn't affect Dio because of the fact that he has so many abs that it just bounces off. First phase is quick, and the second phase I just waited for him to do this level 1 normal attack double hit that leaves him completely vulnerable, but he continues to use it expecting it to hit, even though you can just kind of stand underneath him and he'll miss every single time. You can also smack him after a shinobi sneeze 1000 cuts attack, or just rush him so he panics and backflips off of it to try and impress me, but it never works out. I'm on the metaphorical road again, trying to get to the Rai card to see how Dio would fare against him, but first I have to get past the Marshmallow Man. The best part about this godskin brother is the fact that when he gets to his rolling phase, you can just sit behind a pillar and make a sandwich because he's not going anywhere. You can also just hit him through the pole since his hitbox extends past it, but sometimes I also get hit, so I don't know. Who cares since he's weak anyways and dies instantly. The serpent fight is annoying because the lava cancels my attack before I can get my own attack out, so I'm stuck using only the stand damage for the entire fight, and honestly I was super excited and ready to do this fight and ride card right after, until I saw that my attack gets cancelled before I can even get it out. And honestly, that pissed me off, and I only gave it one attempt because I could not be asked to do multiple attempts doing one attack for basically no damage over and over and over and over and over again. And I mean honestly, after seeing the damage I did on the first attempt, I 100% could have beat them both, but I just do not care in the slightest about going back to getting stunlocked out of my attacks. I played enough Overwatch to know what it feels like to be stunlocked, and I do not want to go back to those dark times of depression. The stupid tomboy Swedish quote unquote healer ruined my experience when she first released, and now I have trust issues. Now this right here is the epitome of JoJo battle scenes. Oh, so you're approaching me type shit going on here. Unfortunately, Gideon just does not stand a chance at all against Dio. Cough, cough, spoilers. He's more like Kakuin, to be honest, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves. If you know, you know. If you don't, then I'll pray for your safe recovery. But yeah, he absolutely does not stand a chance at all and gets absolutely dominated. Since I'm in the land of Moogs, I might as well get the Holy Talisman because we all know what's coming up after Moog. And if you didn't know, you can hug the right wall and just skip the spawning of the white mask guy so you don't even have to deal with him. But we get the Holy Talisman, so Radagon and Elden Beast don't insert inappropriate word here, us constantly. The Lord of Blood is just the kind of guy that someone like Dio wants to meet, and I'm gonna suck the shit out of all the blood in the palace right after I get done dealing with him. The crazy thing is that the power of the scythe is so strong that we almost beat him before he grows wings, which is pretty cool, but we don't, so we suck and we should go into the sewer slide zone. Honestly, under different circumstances, if I didn't have to heal during his countdown, he would have died since he probably would have gotten bled during it, but I was just unlucky so it didn't happen. It's alright though, since he didn't really get the chance to do anything after growing wings, and he got sent to hell by the one and only Dio. Now this is the ultimate Jojo battle, a battle of two bodybuilding gods. This battle was actually super fun with a few openings that I could hit him during. If I mistimed, however, I would get bonked on my noggin pretty hard. The Holy Talisman mixed with a Pearl Jam Talisman basically negated the damage from his Holy Attacks. I usually just waited until he did his Spinning Hammer Dance Attack or any of his Aerial Slam Attacks since he kinda just sits there after them both. Overall, it wasn't too hard since the Scythe and Stand do pretty high amounts of damage, and he's able to be frostbitten, so he's just absolutely getting frosted flakes with no sugar on them at all. Elden Beast ran away from me more than I actually hit him, so that was pretty cool. I can tell why though, because the damage he takes is pretty large margin charge. After Radagon, I usually only had like two flasks left to heal, so I had to make sure to be careful with getting hit because my reactions are so bad that I could get shot and not realize it until the next day. So I had to make sure to have enough health and healing that Elden Stars wouldn't ruin my fun and enjoyment, which is basically impossible. Just hearing the name Elden Stars already makes me sad, but he used his melee attacks constantly, which just let me put the 1-2 Slamaroo on him constantly. That's about it, honestly. After we beat Elden Beast, we fulfill the dynasty of Dio, and we explode with passion before we delete our character and start again. So yeah, anyways. <laughs>